it's taken a long time to get to the point where I'm like, I am a gay mixed race man and I am 100% comfortable and proud mm. of both of those things coexisting together. Yeah. And if you can't handle that, yeah. that's on you. Hi, my name is Susan Dale and you are watching the Hala Hala Mixtape. This is a series in which we bring together a group of mixed race folk to discuss and unpack issues that impact us. This truly is for us, by us, creating our own space for real talk. So sit down and make yourself comfortable, because we're about to go in as we explore the intersectionality of being mixed and queer. Um, my name is Shakaya. On my mother's side, I'm Indigenous Māori from New Zealand and Tahitian and Marquesan. And then on my father's side, I am from Cape Verde, and I'm also from Samoa and Te Pilau. Um, I identify as a Afro-Polynesian proud trans woman. My name is Alex. Um, I'm 27 years old. My mum is white British, uh, and my dad is Tamil Sri Lankan. And I identify as a gay, Australian, mixed race, charming, and lovely handsome man. <laughs> So I was going to kick off with this statistic, um, it's actually back from 2017 so it's probably changed a bit, but in the UK in terms of the ethnicities breakdown of how people identify as queer, like the overwhelming majority was actually mixed race people. Mm. Is that something that surprises you? Um, for me not really, No, it doesn't really surprise me like, no. that much. Um, I don't know whether that's got something to do with the fact that we're mixed race already, so we already mm. have that kind of like fluidity mm -hmm. between like two different races or even more yeah. than one. Um, sorry, even more than two races. So yeah. I don't know whether it's just something that is, you know, like a yeah. lot easier to kind of... I think it's like there's a sort of predisposition towards mm. like negotiating and having to be reflective about sort of who you are yeah. and mm. kind of... I guess, yeah, negotiating or navigating a world in which you're like, oh, I'm not quite this, I'm not quite the other. So you have that, like, maybe you have that voice in your head already that you're sort of already questioning um, your identity. And so when it comes yeah. to, yeah. because I think that statistic probably, what that statistic mm. probably doesn't express is mm. the fact that there'll be a lot more people who identify as LGBTQ plus or queer or whatever mm -hmm. that aren't disclosing it, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it might be, yeah. it might be that yeah. actually across all of the ethnic yeah. groups it's yeah. equal, yeah. but that people who are mixed race, uh, or, or a mixed yeah. heritage yeah. are more mm -hmm. able Open to, yeah, or to more self-reflective or yeah. they've grown up in a society where they've had to like ask themselves those difficult questions yeah. and so a question around sexuality or gender identity mm. is not it, not too much of an extension of that, yeah. but I don't know. That's so true, yeah, mm. definitely agree with that. Mm. I also don't know if you get this experience, but I feel like w there's definitely this feeling of pol being politically correct or yeah aware that now there are these terms, you have to use the right pronouns, all these kind of things. But I feel there isn't that sensitivity when it comes to how mixed race people identify. Like, no, if someone says I'm gay or I'm bisexual, no one, I don't think, really challenges it as openly as maybe someone who says I'm mixed. Okay. And people are like, no, you're black or you're this. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I feel like, of the of the yeah, like I don't know if you've come across that in your experiences when you've said like, this is how I identify. Do you come up against more challenges from people in terms of your sexuality or how you racially identify? I think for me, it's more the whole racial part. Yeah. Like um, for me, being from multiple heritages, yeah. like when I'd go into, I went through indigenous schooling, um, Maori schooling, and when I was in that, that the, those schools, they'd be like, oh, like, but you, don't, you, you look like us, but you look at your hair, or like, are you sure you're this? Or And it was kind of like a constant question, but then when I'd go to others, like the, the more Pacific cultures that I was a part of, they'd be like, oh, you're plastic, you can't speak the language so you're not really from here. And then I, I kind of was confused as to where I belonged. Mm -hmm. And for a long term, I, long time, I stayed with the Māori community because that's what I was familiar with, mm -hmm. that's what I grew up with, and that's what I knew. And then when I, and then when I grew up, I started to explore more of my, my black ancestry and my like 
that side of my culture because there's not a lot of people from uh, Cabo Verde that live in New Zealand. Mm. There was nothing to look at, like there was no yeah. music, there was no culture, there was no food. Mm. The only thing I knew was what, my, what either my parents would tell me or what I would read in a book, which really sucks. Um, mm. And then when I came over to Europe and went out partying with my Cape Verdean people, I was like, wow, like this is so amazing. And I, but it, it was kind of like that question of like, when I went to Cabo Verde, that people were like, yeah, you look like a Creole girl. And then some people would be like, hmm, no, you look something. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, are you Asian? Like, and a lot of people would just constantly question yeah. where I'm from. And I guess because based on the, the way that we look yeah. or like the color of our skin, mm. um, not being da quite dark, mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. you could be from anywhere. And so yeah. many people don't really know where I come from. And for me, that's a constant question that I get. Mm. Um, but in terms of like questions around transness, mm. I kind of don't really get them unless like people, or unless I've disclosed to someone mm -hmm. like about my transness or I'm in a space where people talk about transness, like yeah. in the mm -hmm. queer spaces and the QT pox spaces. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, for me, it was more of like questioning around my cultural identity mm -hmm. and the fact that I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to identify with more than at least two. Like if I tried to right. go be like, oh, oh yeah. there's actually more than that. Mm -hmm. People would be like, oh, you're such a liar. Um, <laughs> and you know, but like the thing with our, like a lot of our Pacific Islanders back in New Zealand is the fact that a lot of us are actually very mixed. Yeah. Like mm. because of the fact that we have the islands, a lot of different people would come, like sailors from different countries would come and start families. So you'll have people that are Samoan Chinese and all these different mixes. So it's kind of normal in a sense, but when it's, it's a spe specifically if it's black, that's when people start to question you. If, it, if you're mixed with black or it, they kind of like, kind of section you out if yeah. you don't look dark enough or if you, mm. if, if you act mm. a certain way and they're like, oh, are you, are you not an islander? Are you trying to be black? And like all these really <laughs> ignorant terms. Yeah. Like we've got a really big problem, especially in our indigenous communities, mm. about the way we, um, we are not identify, but the way that colorism is such a big thing. Like, the whole thing about being like lighter and all of that mm. stuff that exists within all communities. Yeah. It's very prevalent in our indigenous communities and the fact that if you go out in the sun and you come back, like you're gonna get people saying not nice things. That, yeah. And you're just, but like people will say, like, oh, you look really dark, like it's almost like an insult. And I'm like, yeah. thank you, my melanin is popping, yeah. amen. <laughs> and like, I said that to this one girl, she was like, ah, oh. and I was like, yeah, I'm yeah. dark. And like, I, was like, I'm, I was like, I'm not even that dark, but I'm, I'm loving yeah. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. whatever my ancestors gave me, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a big problem and I think, I think it's something that needs to definitely be squashed within mm. our communities because yeah. it's just so bad. Yeah. Actually talking about colorism and all of that, um, I was wondering what your experiences are like dating as a queer person who's mixed because like, <laughs> I feel there's some yeah. stories coming. <laughs> Because I know what it's like as a mixed race woman dating and the sort of fetishization that goes along with it. But yeah, I'm wondering if there's a, what the experience is like for you guys. Mm. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh, I think, you know, I think when it comes to being a gay man and operating in a lot of sort of gay um, male uh, social, I might say something like social and sexual spaces, because a lot of our social mm. spaces are, are very uh, hypersexualized. Mm. Um, it is hard being mixed. I would say it's hard being a person of color in general. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, the way in which a lot of the particularly online spaces mm. are uh, formatted yeah. is mm -hmm. such that you can filter on the basis of race. Yeah. So, um, you know, you do sometimes find yourself in those spaces in particular feeling like a bit of a second class citizen mm. um, because of that and because of also just the kind of genuinely like explicitly racist um, yeah. stuff that you get from people who are anonymized, you know, like they're a torso on a screen so they can say whatever mm -hmm. they want. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is fetishization, a lot yeah. of it is the kind of like where are you from line of questioning, yeah. but a lot of it actually is just people being straight up racist, like mm -hmm. like going Absolutely. out of their way to Single swear you at you, yeah. you and be horrific yeah um in a way which even as a mixed person which i think when you're a mixed person sometimes you're less um well i don't know if this is everyone's experience but i sometimes mm. feel like i'm less used to it because mm -hmm. as someone who is kind of like a bit ethnically ambiguous mm -hmm. i don't tend to fit into a category for people to be like you're this and yeah. therefore you're xyz right yeah. mm. they're kind of like oh you're brown like yeah I don't, and they don't know, i don't <laughs> know like, how to insult else? you because <laughs> i don't know what you are <laughs> right um 
but sometimes people just they they assume so that, that's the other weird thing is that sometimes mm. i get like anti-blackness as someone who mm. does identify as black my dad is no. my dad is asian but he's very dark skinned so yeah. interestingly he does identify as black because in australia no. we have very few uh people of african yeah. descent um and so it's kind of a weird social contract but whatever yeah. um but you know i i certainly don't identify as black but people will like well yeah i'll get mm. the n-word like mm. just and i'm like Hey, you didn't even get it right. Like, you know, if you're going to be racist, like, at least do your research. <laughs> use the right um, term, babe. Yeah, use the right term. Yeah, <laughs> if you're going to be racist, use the right disparaging term. But I... Um, and I'll be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come through with the yeah. insult. Yeah. Like. Uh, Packy, that was the word. <laughs> no, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, but I... Um, it's hard. I would say it's hard. I found recently that mm. I am not consciously so... Um, mm have been more interested in dating uh, other men of colour because yeah. it feels like there's a part of myself that I don't have to explain. Yeah. And I find that quite liberating. Mm. And it's not that, you know, I've dated lots of lovely white men, I'm sure I'll continue to, but there is always that bit where I have to be like, oh yeah, you're not, you don't get that part of my life and I need to sort of yeah. explain it, mm. which is fine. But sometimes you don't want to have to explain yeah. it. Sometimes yeah. you just want someone who's like, babe, hey, that's shit. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Literally. Rather, rather than, was that racism though? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. No, I don't yeah. need that in my life right now. Are you yeah. reaching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, you shut up with microaggression. <laughs> like, you just learned the word microaggression. Like, uh, you just learned so it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think dating, I mean, I think your, your experience is going to be really different and really interesting. Mm. But I think, yeah, dating as a, as, a, as a gay man, I would say, if you're a, if you're a mixed race, if you're a person of colour, it's not the best. It's, it can be, there is that area. So a lot of people when they see me, like if they find out that I'm like Pat Pacific Islander, there's like this whole big fetish of like, um, like getting with someone that looks like Moana. And I don't, <laughs> honestly, I, like I, I, I have, I have <laughs> literally had someone being like, I'm going to fuck the native out of you. Or like, <laughs> or like, or like, oh, come here, you Hawaiian Moana. And I was like, excuse me, like, <laughs> And, and like, I was dating someone that used to say stuff like that to me and I was like, this is disgusting, why am I in it? And the yeah. worst part was the fact that the person I was dating was mixed race as well. Yeah. But, but there was like this whole like different kind of way that they were brought up in comparison right. to how I was brought up. And it kind of just like, it kind of shook me. It really, yeah. really did shake, like shake yeah. me. I was like, I can't believe you just said that or like, you know. Yeah. And um, th I feel like there's obviously a big fetish around like mixed people, mixed mm. girls, mixed women, mixed men. Um, yeah. and gender non-conforming people as well. Um, but yeah, there's just always, I feel like just to talking in terms of like being mixed race, mm. um, that is just a fetish in itself. And like, um, there's this thing that I do in a show and we actually say, I am not a fetish. Mm -hmm. And it's so true because we're not a fetish. We're not here for you yeah, to like, gawk at and be, yeah. or, or to be like, yes, yeah. queer, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah, God, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Like it gets hella annoying and I'm just like, oh. So there's obviously that, um, and then like the, the whole like being trans thing is just like a, even like more confusing for people. Like if I'm going to start dating them, I'll be like, oh yeah, also I'm trans, rah, 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 rah. Like for me, for me, I didn't date for a while based on the fact that I was too scared to yeah. be like, oh, I'm a trans woman, blah, 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 blah. And I was still trying to figure out that identity in itself mm. and being open about that. Yeah. Um, because like, yeah, f f a lot of people, when it comes to being a trans woman or being a trans woman of colour, all people see, like guys that want to get, they just want to get with you. Yeah. They want to try it for the first time. They're like, oh, they're like, oh yeah, well, I've, I've always wanted to fuck a trans person. And like, it's for me, it's like, I'm not a piece of meat that you can just try it for your first time oh and then gosh. be like, bye baby, yeah. you know? And like, that's one thing that always irritates me the most. So I kind of, I found it in the past difficult trying to navigate the dating space where I can find someone who, number one, doesn't care that I'm trans, doesn't yeah. fetishize me. Yeah based on the fact that I'm trans and actually wants to stay, mm. yeah. doesn't want to just yeah, be yeah. there for mm. five minutes. Yeah. Mm. And then there's also that trying to find someone who also can talk about the conversation, oh, is open to learning about that conversation mm. of being mixed race as well and understanding that and not making assumptions and not jumping to conclusions based on the fact of what they've seen on TV yeah. or what they know yeah. because they've got a friend who's mixed race or they've got a friend who's trans. Like, none of us are the same. All black women are not the same, or trans women are not the same, yeah. or mixed race women, or, or mixed race people aren't yeah. the same. Yeah. So you can't put us into one category. Totally. Um, but yeah, dating is a, it's a crazy thing. Like I've spoken to so many like trans women of color about their dating experiences. Mm. And like, obviously everyone's different. Like, and yeah. the, the sad thing is that people who pass, mm. like there's this term, like, are you passable? Yeah. Like, do you pass as a cis woman or, are people going to question you? Mm. And unfortunately for women who 
do are more quote unquote passable, it's easier for them, yeah. you know. But then for people who aren't so passable and are just kind of starting their transition, it's a little bit more difficult, mm. which is really, really sad. And mm. like, it, a lot of people like don't understand that like trans women that like men are heterosexual, like we're straight women, yeah. we're not gay. Like yeah. if I was gay, I'd be a lesbian. So, <laughs> you know, and there's just that whole like, people are like, oh, so what are you, are you gay? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm like a heterosexual yeah. trans woman. Um, and also this bizarre yeah. idea that if a like if a cis straight man sleeps with a trans woman, that, that it makes him gay. exactly. It make, it's literally like I watched this thing on um, Instagram, and it was like a video of a dude who he's a black male that was dating a black trans oh woman, God, yeah. and oh he yeah, yeah like the thing. like the community in his area just rotted him down. He ended up ending his life, and yeah. it's really sad because that now is going to encourage other men that like trans women or they might not even like all trans women they just might fall in love with this one person yeah. that yeah. just so happens to be trans yeah. and because of the community that they are in mm -hmm. like it's 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 that whole toxic masculinity kind of thing and like yeah. it just eats at them and it, it sucks and it's sad and like it's it's one thing for me when i was um dating that person was like their idea was like oh yeah you can be trans we just won't tell anyone yeah. and i was like well like and for me, I was, I was like, oh, cool, at the time. I was like, oh, yeah, I don't want to tell anyone anyways, because yeah. I'm not a walking piece of art. But then when I thought about it, like, as I, I was in it longer, I was kind of more like, actually, like, are you ashamed of the fact that I'm trans? Like, yeah. I shouldn't have to be ashamed of anything yeah. that makes me who I am, kind yeah. of thing. Um, I was wanting to actually ask you guys about... It's interesting. So there's this game mix guy that... I, I met and <laughs> he said something really interesting which was that he feels more comfortable you know coming out and identifying as a gay man than as a mixed race man because he feels like there is a community uh, and so I was wondering if you guys <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm like, Give me this one. I'm like, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready. Like, <laughs> so my question was, do you feel a sense of belonging as a mixed race person in the LGBTQ no, community? <laughs> uh, uh, you're, you're like very excited, so you go okay. for it. <laughs> so I feel really strongly about this because I think, I think it's really important for mixed race to feel, basically mixed race mm. people to feel like they can belong. Mm. And I don't think that we are really given the space or time to do so. Mm. One of the reasons that I like projects like this and similar projects is that what we're doing is we're creating content to kind of build up this like, pan like this kind of cultural sort of mixed race experience pantheon of, yeah. of work, mm. um, which speaks to an experience which I think has kind of been relegated to the sidelines for a long time. Mm. I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the kind of the the mind work that's not quite the right word it sounds like a german word the mind work um <laughs> the mind that, work. That, that goes on trying to kind of figure mm. out who you are yeah. And, yeah. and like mm. identifying as mixed race and that kind of stuff could be really supported by us you know wanting to create a culture around being mixed race and i think mm. what's really cool about being mixed race mm. is that you know none of us share from like a dna perspective you know it, well, from all around the world yeah. but we have a collective experience and i think there's something really powerful in that yeah. the fact that three people from from with genetics from different parts of the world can come together and be like oh yeah we all we all get we that. get the we same thing yeah that. we all vibe that like yeah, yeah. that to me has power right there's something mm. in that which is like profoundly powerful mm. and i just think that i don't know i just think mixed race people i think we have a lot to give and i think mm. we have a lot to to contribute and to share and if you think about some of the people like someone like Meghan Markle yeah and Barack Obama is mixed race despite perhaps not identifying yeah. as such yeah. like we've had some people who have you know ascended to the sort of tops of their field or whatever mm -hmm. and I don't and I don't think that being mixed race has been incidental in that I think that it gives us a perspective on people and on life which is really um rare and mm -hmm. really important yeah. so why not try in some way to build up a sense of kind of collective belonging mm. so that we can kind of grow up and lean into that and be like, oh yeah, there is a community. And I don't know, it just feels like when you're black, you have a black community. Yeah. When you're yeah. Pacifica or yeah. Maori, you have like a Maori community. When you're South Asian, you have a South Asian community. Mm. But we don't build that space for the people who exist in between, who sometimes have the hardest struggle in kind of finding out yeah. and figuring Literally. out who they are. So like, yeah. it, it's like the opportunity is there, like let's, mm fill up that space and create it. So Definitely. people can find it belong. Because you're right, yeah. being gay, yeah. 
yeah. despite being, you know, a difficult thing, despite not always feeling like I particularly belong in a gay community for usually racial reasons, mm. I, there is still a community mm. for a queer mm. community, like an LGBTQIA yeah. plus community, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Yeah. there are places and people that you can fall back on in a way that I don't think that we have with being mixed race. So yeah. Definitely. I don't think it's really important. Definitely. I really like the fact also, the fact <laughs> also that um, here in London there is a big... QT pop community, like the queer, trans, intersex, but for people of colour. Yeah. And I really, like, when I first came to London and I found out about these events, yeah. and I went to, like, my very first Pussy Palace, I was so amazed at the fact that, one, I could be unapologetically trans, yeah. and two, I could unapologetically be a person of colour mm. and have no problems yeah. with yeah. either of them. Yeah. Like, you, I could just exist yeah. and not get questioned about anything because people so were just like, really. this is your space, enjoy it, yeah. have yeah, fun, totally. love everybody and don't harass anybody, yeah. you know? like. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely, I would definitely would say um, that the whole, that whole idea of like um, going through different communities, I definitely think it is things like this that really do help to create that sense of belonging for mm. people that are mixed mm. and for other people like to just realise that obviously there's more than just black and white mix, yeah. Yeah. that there is Asian, mm. that there is Pacifica, that there is Latino, Latina, mm. like there's so many different things out there and that obviously we once again have that shared experience but that we can all come together and find that middle ground mm. and yeah. you know speak and like ask questions and yeah. be like, oh, I'm a young mixed race kid and I don't know how to deal with this. Like having that vocabulary and having that space where our younger mixed yeah. kids can learn from us, I guess, and um, learn how to navigate the spaces, mm. unfortunately, that are built yeah. by society. Yeah. Um, and yeah, really go through that. And then obviously then there's that whole thing with kids who are trans and kids who are identifiers all these different things within the LGBT community but yeah I do definitely think that there is that space for the queer community yeah. but yeah once again like you were saying there needs to be work done for the mixed race community yeah. and I think that mm. also like we need to make people feel like they don't have to assimilate because I think definitely like, and like, you kind of spoke to this a little bit before as well but like my experience was has been of like trying to assimilate into white society, mm. realizing that that yeah. is impossible. Mm. Trying to assimilate into sort of like South Asian society and realizing that's probably easier, but they're still like, you're white. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. There's still that kind of like, you don't quite get, you know, you don't yeah. quite have the same cultural references or whatever yeah. it is. And so like, not making particularly young mixed race people feel like they have to assimilate in order to belong, right? Yeah. Because that is a, that experience is an experience which I think ultimately, I mean, some people can manage it, but I think yeah. ultimately it leads you to to sort of feeling mm. like you don't belong. And everyone yeah. deserves a sense of belonging, right? Definitely. They say yeah. Everyone deserves to feel like they have a place in the world. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's that's the important thing is that people don't grow up being like, oh, I have to I have to pretend to be this, I have to pretend to be this. Yeah. Like, no, you don't have to pretend yeah. to be anything. You can, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. be yourself. Absolutely. And that there's, a, there's people around you who will be like, you're great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. literally, yeah. 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 So I think like we, we can all appreciate, like we are saying, like representation matters so much. Yeah. And I feel like, especially with role models and celebrities, even just, you know, like you're saying, like Meghan Markle, I feel like she's the only, like, openly <laughs> mixed yeah. race person that identifies. And I don't know if you also, I, I feel frustrated when I see celebrities that don't talk about their mixed heritage. Um, and like you're saying, they sort of lean more to one part of their heritage than the other. And I know that there's quite a few prominent activists in your field who are mixed race, yeah. but I never hear them yeah. speak on that. Uh, yeah. um, and I know it's hard because it's like, they're obviously like doing so much um, in promoting trans rights and all those kind of things, but it seems a shame that they don't talk about that intersectionality that is so unique. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you feel that frustration or maybe there are people that I haven't come across that are be more outspoken? I think partially it's because we don't have that kind of community and culture. And so I think mm -hmm. particularly for a lot of friends of mine who have a white parent but identify as black, mm. um, they feel like there's more for them in the black community. Yeah. And they feel like there's more, you know, there's more history, there's more culture, mm. but there's also more kind of like politics and solidarity, yeah. right? Um, mm. To identify as, I think, to identify as a black woman versus to identify as a mixed race woman, I think, if you identify as a black woman, there's sort of more, it feels like there's, a, it feels like as it currently stands, that's a more political stance. Yeah. I mean, it's also like just 
the person who you are, right? Mm-hmm. But to be mixed race, I think it's political, but I don't think we have mm-hmm. like a a history of political thought. Like, I don't think we can yeah. be like, oh, you know, like let's look at mixed race people in this era, or like it's just not, or let's look at like mixed race, yeah. mixed race politics. Like mm-hmm. we don't really yeah. have that because I think this is a very burgeoning new kind of um, sort of field or experience. But yeah, I agree. I think I think a lot of people who are particularly black mixed race and also to an extent Asian mixed race, mm-hmm. they, I think they also worry about alienating their own communities yeah. because for them mm-hmm. to be like, I'm mixed and this is what this means mm-hmm. might make people who, especially I'm talking about in the world of yeah. activism, who identify yeah. with them and who support their work be like, I don't care about that. Like you're one of like you're kind of one of mm, us, and you fight yeah. for us, right? Yeah. Because like for me, like I fight for the Asian community. I do yeah. a lot of work with South Asian, particularly South Asian queer men. Mm. Um, but I am mixed race, and yeah. I do talk about it. But I mm. do feel sometimes that it is not a barrier, but it's actually when you're trying to work with a community, you by being like, oh, I'm actually a bit different from you. Particularly when that difference yeah. comes with a lot of privilege, yeah. it can kind of act as a bit of a barrier, right? To be like, mm. well, actually, I've got a white parent, and yeah. my experiences are different to yours. They're kind of like, well, then how can you fight for me, right? Or, mm-hmm. or it feels like you're not kind of as in it as much, which I don't think is true. But yeah. it is a hard one. I agree yeah. with you, though. I think, but I think that also the other thing is that, and I said this before, you know, being mixed race, despite being very I think a very important thing to talk about and being very interesting, you know, we don't, it's not, we're not, we're not seeing hate crimes against mixed race people in the same way that we are like black and maybe in this mm. country, like Muslim people, mm. which right. are majority South Asian in this country anyway. Um, and so I do think there is not a hierarchy of like need, but like, I think broadly speaking, yeah, I would, I don't fight on behalf of like mixed race rights no. right i fight mm. on behalf of the rights of people of color yeah. and i appreciate the majority of those people are not mixed race yeah. and they are they have a much tougher experience than i do as someone mm. who is i think the ambiguous or whatever so sure. i think in the activist space mm. it's an interesting but not necessarily always useful right. um, space yeah mm. it's not a useful um thing to talk about in terms of helping to to gain rights right yeah no. but it is but an important t- part of your identity but, you know as mm. you know younger alex like yeah. what it would have meant yeah. for you to see someone yeah. who openly Absolutely. talked about being mixed and gay yeah like no from a representation standpoint yeah your, your journey of identity yeah. and that kind of stuff no i agree yeah. from a representation standpoint i think it's non-negotiable like i think yeah. it's important to have people who are standing up and being like this is who i am mm. um but just from like a change making perspective i can kind mm-hmm. of see mm-hmm. why because I, I do sometimes feel, and I, I've been sort of challenging this mm. recently, like I do sometimes feel that being mixed is a hindrance in the work that I do because mm. there are a lot of people who are, and I think probably quite rightly so because of their previous experiences, yeah. suspicious of or um, um, uh, resentful of whiteness. And so mm. when you're like, newsflash, I am white. Or like I am a partially, you know, this is my mum and yeah. she's a white woman. Mm-hmm. There are people who... Who, who actually find that really challenging. Yeah. And when you and I never don't disclose, like I'm, I'm yeah. that's who I am. But yeah. I do think that sometimes people are a bit like, you know, when you're in the kind of anti racism mm-hmm. space, they're like, ooh, like you don't mm. quite get it. And you don't get it. And it's like, oh, well, I do, but you know, yeah. it's a, it's a it's different, different getting it. Yeah. Um, but no, from a representation standpoint, 100%. And that's mm. why I've been so, I've tried so hard to, yeah. to make this point. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Because it's, it is an important point, for sure. Yeah. I was wanting to learn what what impact there has been on your mental health when it comes to being someone who is both mixed and queer. It's been hard. I would definitely say it's been hard. Like there was like there's sometimes like my mum doesn't get Mm. it when I get really upset about things. Like I get very very vexed. I get really vexed, and sometimes even my dad. They don't understand it when I get super shitty at people or like super shitty about the world. Like remember there was this one time and I came home and I just went to my room and I just had to listen to Solange and I was just crying for like two hours straight. And I was just so angry at white people and just like the, just the way society was that day. And I don't know what it was. I'm, I'm sure like other people of colour go through these stages yeah. as well. But my dad was like, oh, like, and I was like, dad, you should know you're part black. Like, how do you not know this? Like, you're mixed too. Like, how do you not get that I'm shitty? And like, he understands more. But like, my mum doesn't really get it in the same sense because she's mainly just Pacifica indigenous. Mm. Um, so she doesn't understand it when I get angry about like those different things. And like, 
it was it was making me go crazy. Like yeah. at some points, like I would definitely question, like, oh my god, I don't belong here, I don't belong there. But then also, like, there's just all this shit going on within all our different communities, mm -hmm. and like, how can I make it a better space for not just myself, yeah. but for the people that I love and for the people in my community mm -hmm. that need that space as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously, like, with like black trans women are like dying like everywhere and it's it's sad like being a black trans woman in the states especially or just in general like number one you've got your transness so people are already targeting you because they're like what are you why are you here i hate you just because of what you are and then there's also that whole thing of i hate you also because you're black so there's there's just a whole lot of different things and being a woman, um, right? and, being a wom and being a woman like the third thing just be being a woman in general so like it's like a triple whammy like mm. people are out to get you like, and, and it sucks and like there's there's times that you're gonna be upset about it like but i think like or for, for me anyways like the thing that actually helped me the most was just being surrounded by other women of color mm. being surrounded by other queer people of color and I think most recently, the most healing experience was um, I was at a Vogue ball in New Zealand and I didn't want to walk in this category. It was like just face and it was for trans women. And I was just trying to hide. And then one of the girls grabs me and then like 10 trans girls stood behind me and like yeah. clicked for me. And they were like, this is our sissy and introduced me to the stage. And like, I was just like so taken back by that because it meant so much to finally feel like the, you know, the trans community, community had my back yeah. and yeah that was something that was very healing for my mental health and almost made me feel sane in a sense that I can yeah. be openly like yes I'm a trans girl and I'm it's, it's a bad thing you know <laughs> so like yeah so yeah I love that <laughs> I think it's fair to say that it has had a pretty a pretty um, heavy impact on my mental health mm -hmm. it's hard for me to distinguish between like the experience of coming out as gay and like that being um and all the kind of, yeah, the, the, the mental anguish that's mm. sort of been, an emotional anguish is involved yeah. in that and being mixed race. I think though that ultimately, like, a lot of people's mental health is affected by not feeling like they have a place where they can belong, right? I think it really yeah. comes down to belonging yeah. um, and not feeling like you have a community behind you. Mm. And I do feel that it has been a bit of a double whammy in mm. that um, I always felt quite comfortable in my identity as a mixed race man or as a mixed race person, yeah. especially growing up. Um, I was like, oh, I'm mixed, like, I'm out this, I'm out that, like, cool, whatever, mm. like, mm. deal with it. Um, but when I came out as gay, that was quite a difficult experience for me. And then realizing that, you know, finally feeling like I would, I'd let go of something which was really, um, really hurting me to hold in, kind of finally letting go of that and then being like, okay, I have a community. I have people around me who, who, um, you know, are like, you know, look, are, there, are there for me or looking out for yeah. me or pushing me or whatever and then going into the spaces that were supposed to be a part of my community and then experiencing racism, mm. I think made me take a big, step back, a big step back and be like, wait a second. Because I think up until that point, I'd been quite, you know, I dealt with racism in lots of ways, but I just, it wasn't, I was just like, yeah, you know, whatever, that's life. And then mm. I think I was always dealing with the gay thing more, but that was like kind of yeah. taking up more mind yeah. space. Um, but then, yeah, coming out and being like, okay, I can finally belong, and yeah. then realizing that actually I still didn't belong yeah. mm, in the spaces yeah. that were the mainstream spaces that were kind of afforded to me, made me take a big step back and then have to really reflect on what it means to be a person of color, mm. what it means mm. to be mixed mm. uh, in this country, back home in Australia. Like, yeah. and I think that experience has probably been more taxing because it's taken me a long time, and I still. You know, it's it's fair to say I still waver on this sometimes. It's yeah. still been it's taken a long time to get to the point where I'm like, I am a gay mixed race man, and I am one hundred percent comfortable and proud mm. of both of those things coexisting together. Yeah, and if you can't handle that. Yeah. That's on you. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, that, yeah. that's on you. Tell them. I'm Tell them. Brilliant. Like, do you know <laughs> yeah. I mean? And it's like it's that it's that you know it's hard to get to that stage. Yeah. It's really hard, and I can say that today on a Sunday morning. But you know, in three days time, I might not be able to say that because yeah. I might go to a club and someone might be racist to me. Yeah. yeah. I might go to like some sort of South Asian gathering and someone's being homophobic and then it hits and then I'm like, yeah. wait, am I brilliant? Mm. Is it okay yeah. for me to coexist with all these yeah. things? So yeah, I think it's fair to say that it's had a pretty big impact on my mental health, but I do feel like I'm in a space and I feel like when you're in that space, it's so important to share this sentiment and this feeling where I'm like, actually, no, I, I am both of those things and, mm. and that makes me a perfectly reasonable, lovely, great, charming 
person yeah because when you can be that per- because then that means you can be that person with someone else mm. right to my representation it means yeah. that i can serve and be like yeah i am those two things fight me yeah. and then someone who- fight me <laughs> <laughs> and then, don't no one fight me <laughs> i am not a fighter <laughs> But you know, it, what that does is then it means that someone who was, yeah, me, like younger yeah. Alex yeah. or you're younger any yeah. of us, like five years ago or 10 years yeah. ago, or whatever, can see me doing that and be like, oh, okay. Yeah. And it's, yeah. this is not theoretical. I have people who, who, who contact me usually online and tell me yeah. this and it's enormously gratifying that it keeps yeah. me doing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you can help someone else belong yeah. through your own experience of your, your treacherous journey mm-hmm. of finding out how to belong, like, then yeah. it's a circle of life, right? You're helping each other. It's yeah, it's absolutely. like your trans sisters pushing you onto the stage. It's yeah. like we're all we're all making each other, you know, helping each other to belong. Yeah, better. Yeah. Like that that's sense what of it's belonging, about, right? Yeah, definitely. But I was wanting to ask you guys because I think we we understand the notion of fluidity when it comes to identity. Do you feel that labels we use to identify ourselves? are affirming or do you feel that they're actually limiting i think it's fair to say that labels will always exist because they're a they're a a mechanism of of society and of language right people Mm -hmm. are like you are x Mm -hmm. you are y like we're constantly sorting each other into categories sometimes problematically but like i think it's i think it's like part of who we are um but i think i think labels will always be both because it actually depends yeah. on the context in which you're using the label mm-hmm. like the term black might be really mm-hmm. affirming for someone and feel really limiting for someone else mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but I certainly don't subscribe to the idea that we're going to get to a point where there are no labels I think there'll mm-hmm. always yeah. be you know and, and that's why I like the term mixed race because I think it gives mm-hmm. a, what I think of as quite an inclusive label to a, yeah. a very broad subset of Definitely. people that exist in, in between oh, yeah. space I think like Non-binary is a similar example. Yeah. I think maybe with gender identity, yeah. you can speak obviously much better to this, but I think it it, it can be a bit more difficult because people there are sort of competing labels in a way for yeah. different experiences mm-hmm. that are kind of uh, facets of each other or very similar to each other, at least in my um, understanding. But I think it, it, you, it's not an, it's not a question that has like a, a solid answer, right? It's always going to be a bit of both. But I like I like labels because I think mm-hmm. they give me something to stand and yeah. be like, this is the this thing is that me. I am. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And everyone yeah. wants mm. that, I think, to an extent. Mm. Because even people who eschew labels, well, I mean, that's not necessarily true, but I was going to say people who eschew like, binary labels yeah. give themselves a label of not like conforming to a binary, right? Literally. So if you're like, I'm a non-binary person, mm-hmm. like I don't identify as male or female, uh, or I identify as a mixture or somewhere in between, you're identifying as being in between, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, you're still yeah. taking on a label as part of your yeah. identity. Yeah. So I don't know, yeah. I just, labels are always going to exist. <laughs> yeah, amen. They're going to exist forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and see. That <laughs> end with my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> hello, hello is all about starting conversations. And I hope this episode has started one for you or made you delve deeper. There is no universal way on how to be mixed race, and the views discussed on here are mine, Alex and Shakaya's truths. If you like this type of content, then like, drop us a comment, share with friends and follow us on Instagram. Your support allows us to keep sharing stories, stories which deserve to be told. So subscribe and stay tuned because we have much more coming your way.